My name is Brianna, and I welcome you to the Tales of Adventure, a D&D podcast like no other. Hi everyone, I'm Heather. I am one of the directors over at the Nerdsmith Network, and I'm on the show Shenanigans playing Flora, who is a uh, Eladrin druid, and she's very excitable and very excited to be here, and she just won a contest to go on a ship, and uh, she's celebrating with her friend Dermot. Pardon me, I don't mean to interrupt, but you look like one of the people who won the contest. Is that correct? Oh, hi. Yeah, that's actually correct. Uh, me and my friend Dermot here, and she gestures at the bear. Your friend is a giant teddy bear? Sorry, I'm not from here. It's all right. We're not either, actually. Well, he might be. I'm not. But um, it's a very, very strange situation. He's definitely some kind of construct. We don't know exactly where he came from because he doesn't really remember much, but he has these moments where he goes inanimate and he can't move or talk or anything. Uh, he has no control over it, so, you know, we decided to come out and celebrate since we won the tickets, and, well, there he is. That's rather unfortunate. I wonder if there's something that could be done to help leave that or help him at least know when it's going to happen. There might be. Um, we've actually been saving money towards trying to figure that out for him whenever we t he takes little jobs he's saving it up to try and do that but in the meantime i mean luckily he doesn't really have to eat a drink so he's all right it's not like he's missing dinner or anything but uh, he'll probably be back again tomorrow he it's really variable how long he stays out of it so well at least he has a friend to help take care of him my name is isra by the way and you are oh it's nice to meet you i'm flora Pleasure to meet you as well. Are you excited to be going on this voyage? I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, there's supposed to be so many new things out there and no one's ever seen it before. And, you know, there's all sorts of other worlds. I don't know if we're going to run into one because we're only supposed to be gone for 33 hours. But nonetheless, it's going to be amazing to even get to look. Yeah, it's a very amazing thing of being able to travel and see different places. Especially to be able to see different worlds. I know, I'm so excited. How long have you been waiting to hear if you won? Well, I heard about the contest coming up about three months ago when they first started announcing things and that they were going to be doing it. And they took applications and, um, you know, the raffle tickets and everything for about another month. And then they took a month to make sure no one had cheated because obviously that's a big thing. Especially in a town with so much magic like Ashport. So they had to make sure no one cheated and snuck something in that would make them the automatic winners. Anyone who did was disqualified. I heard they disqualified like five people. Well, I was actually expecting more. People with magic sometimes try and use it to cheat. Yeah, well, I heard that they had some wards or something or some runes inside the boxes that had the that you put the raffle tickets into. So it was only really the strong casters that could get past it. Huh. Mm -hmm. So they were very smart about how they set up the applications. It's impressive. That's the butch field for you. They have to be. Virgin. I knew I recognized this place. It's Nero, I guess, technically, but I heard they're associated with the birch field, so I don't know. I've met someone from the birch field before. Uh, her name was Adelaide. She was rather charming conversationalist, and it's been a while since I've been here, but I hope she's doing well. Adelaide, I don't know any... I actually don't actually know anyone from the birch field, but there's a lot of people there. Was she one of the directors or something, or...? I believe she was a productor. Oh, they're important. So I gathered. So who else is going to be going on this voyage? Well, I only met a few of them so far. I know that actually uh, one of my friends, uh, besides Dermot here, their name's Lilac. They're going to be going with us as well. Although it sounds like they don't actually know how they ended up entered in the contest. Uh, we think that maybe somehow someone's... Strange. Yeah. It's a bit weird. They had a suggestion box on the counter at the bookstore 
right next to the box that had the raffle tickets and everything in it. So we're not sure if maybe someone accidentally submitted it to the wrong box. But either way, they won, so they're going to go. They're not sure how they feel about it yet, but I think they'll have fun eventually. Imagine winning a raffle for something that you weren't interested in and finding yourself suddenly having to leave on the, the first of a... Uh, for the first of its kind voyage can be rather off putting. Probably. And then, um, let's see. We met a couple other people the other day. There was, uh, well, actually, I know Curie. Uh, she's a tabaxi. She's really smart. And she knows a lot of people. She's actually helping me look for someone. And then there was a friend of hers named Dietrich. And who's the other one? Oh, there was a gnome. She had a lot of armor on. I don't actually know exactly what she does for a living, but she had a lot of armor and her name was Piper. She was interested in going on the trip, but she was definitely very short-tempered. No pun intended. I'm sure she's heard that plenty of times. Sounds like a very interesting, well-rounded group of people. Mm -hmm. There were some others, but those are the only ones I remember. I'm curious, what drew you towards taking this voyage? Going somewhere new and seeing something that no one's ever seen before, and I mean, just, I'm curious about everything. I want to learn about everything I can, so getting to see something that no one's ever seen before and getting to go out there and see what it's like and learn about it, and I mean, I know I'm not going to get to go out there and do a lot of research or anything, but there's that. Oh, and the giant hamsters. Part of the me, the what? The giant space hamsters. I don't know all the details, but I heard that there's giant space hamsters that have something to do with how the ship runs. I, I don't know exactly in what context. I, I suppose they're probably going to tell us when we take the voyage, but I'm really excited to meet them. It's a very unique method of sh ship propulsion, I must say. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it's a very unique ship, seeing as how they go through the Nexus and all. Yep. Keep mentioning the Nexus. What is this Nexus? Well, mm, I'm not a magic scholar, so, you know, uh, uh, essentially, from how it's been explained to me, there's all these different worlds, kind of like the different planes that we have, you know, like the material plane and the ice plane and that sort of thing. And whatever it is that connects them all together uh, is sort of the Nexus. So there's... And besides the planes that we're familiar with, there's also other worlds that are completely different and might have completely different planes to ours. They're not the same. And each of those different worlds is also connected to the Nexus. And then at each of those worlds, there might it, we don't know exactly what we're going to find, but the Nexus connects it all. And then around each of the worlds is something called the Wild Space, which is sort of like a really, really empty black sky. Hmm. Huh. Sounds... Interesting. I've traveled a lot to a lot of different places and worlds. I've never heard of anything quite like this. Again, I don't know all the details, but apparently about 50 years ago or so, there was a group of heroes from the Birchfield. Oh, actually, that's why Adelaide's name sounded familiar when you said it. I think she might have been one of them. They ended up going up against someone who was trying to change the world in some way. I don't know all the details. I, I don't really study a lot of history, but they ended up somehow talking to people from the Nexus, like some sort of beings that live in the Nexus or travel through it or something. And to show sort of the, their good faith and the friendship, those people that the proctors from the Birchfield met, they gave them information on how to travel through the Nexus. And so for the last 50 years or so, the Birchfield and Nero's been working together to try to figure out how to build ships to travel through it. And apparently they figured it out. Huh, 50 years. I didn't realize it had been that long. Give or take a few. Guess I lost track of time more than I realized. Also, travel between worlds, time works very differently. That's fair. Oh, that's something I hadn't thought of. I wonder if I'm going to come back and have to harvest everything. Hmm. You work as a farmer? Well, I'm really good with plants and animals. So Dermot and I, she pats the bear. We've got a little uh, bit of a farm by our cave that we live in outside of the city. 
and um, it's not very big. It's just a couple, you know, little vegetable patches and things, but it's so that I don't have to forage for everything. Uh, he doesn't have to eat, but I do. And for work, when we need coin, well, he's an entertainer. He he does really well with his little drum there. And I actually go and do work for some of the rich people in the area in their gardens. When sometimes they're not rich, it depends. I mean, I'm willing to take any job as long as they're going to pay me correctly. So I've done a lot of things. I'm really good with fire. Um... That happens to be my specialty, is working with plants that need fire in order to uh, break open the seed pods and germinate and things like that. There's not a lot of plants in the area that do that, but there's a few. Sounds like you have a rather nice life here. It's been working out all right so far. How long have you and Dermot been traveling together? Or when did you find him? Hmm. Uh, let's see. It's been... It's been a while... Probably about a year-ish or so um, since I found him. It might be a little more than that. He's better at keeping track of the date, so I'd have to check when he's awake. And how did you find him? I'm curious. It's not every day someone comes across such a unique construct. Well, that's uh, a very interesting story, actually. I was uh, sent out from the grove where I lived with my family you know, to travel and see the world and all that. And one of the things that happened is that they gave me a name of someone I should go find to talk to him. And when I got to his house, it looked really deserted and there wasn't any evidence of anyone living there. So I went in, I started looking around and I fell through the stairs and landed right on Dermot's lap. That's what made to make a new friend. It worked okay. He was just really excited to see a person because he'd been alone inside the house, trapped in a room for he doesn't know how long. That must have been terrible. Mm-hmm. He was very, very excited to get out. And you've been traveling together ever since, I'm assuming. Pretty much. Um, he, he jokes sometimes that I'm his service elf, uh, since he has these moments, she gestures at him again, where he can't really move or talk or anything. So if he doesn't have someone helping him and making sure he doesn't get into trouble, he could end up, you know, stepped on or trampled or torn apart or used for pieces or any sort of other awful things. So whenever he goes like this, I make sure to carry him around with me. Although he's just as tall as I am, so it's a bit awkward, but luckily he doesn't weigh much. That's a good thing he has you as a friend then. Thank you. Yeah, I try to be a good friend. He's been a good one. He's very sweet. I wish you could meet him, but he's, you know, incapacitated. Perhaps one of these days when next time we run into each other, he will not be having this problem. I have some friends who are familiar with constructs, so I can ask and see if they've heard of anything like this. They may be able to provide some sort of a hint as to how to help him. Oh, that'd be fantastic. Maybe by the time we come back from the trip, you'll have heard from one of them. That would be great. He'd really like to know. Let's see, it's a couple days till we leave, and then... Th so, yeah, that's a few days, maybe. Maybe. There's a thing with traveling to other worlds and going on any sort of adventure that's... It doesn't always work like you think it will. Oh, all right. Oh, that's right, you mentioned that. So, okay, well, I'm used to time distortions occasionally happening. I mean, this is Ashport, after all, so I think I'll be all right. And distortions are normal here. Well... I suppose you could say magic distortions in general are normal, normal here. I've only been here for a while, like we haven't lived here for a really long time, but I've noticed that especially around some of the proctors who have those the badges and all, I heard someone call it magic poisoning. Oh yes, and I'm, I'm familiar with this, that lady explained it to me when we spoke. Oh yeah, perfect, yeah, so it's the magic poisoning and Apparently, sometimes even if you're not a proctor working with all the magic items all the time, it still can bleed over a little bit. So, you know, I've seen things appear out of nowhere and let's see what else has happened. Oh, there was one time where Dimit and I went to get coffee and there was a proctor in the shop and all of a sudden, oh, it was the Jabba coffee. And all of a sudden, this group of people came in and they were singing and dancing and they surrounded the proctor. They didn't do anything to them. They just sang and danced and kept mentioning the proctor's name. And uh, after a few minutes, they went away. But 
the, the proctor was definitely very embarrassed and apparently it was just one of those random things that happens and another time I saw one of the proctors uh, shrink. They started de-aging and getting younger, which was really awkward because we were in a bar. That must have been rather disorientating for them as well. Mm-hmm, I'd imagine. So what brought you to Ashport? Like I said, I've been here before, but it's been a while, obviously longer than I thought. I was just coming in, I heard the rumors that something exciting was happening, and when I found out about the traveling to the Nexus, I figured I would come and see how things go. That makes sense. It's very exciting, and, uh, you know, it's too bad you weren't here a little earlier. You could have entered the contest yourself. I have my own ways of traveling world, so I want one to rob someone else of their chance. Well, that's nice of you. You mentioned that you're not from here either. You said when you came here, where are you originally from? Well, it's sort of a long story, but my, my grove that I grew up in with my family is very far away. And, I, you know, I've traveled through some various areas. I mean, it's so far away that you'd have to go past Lamina Island to get there. So you probably wouldn't have heard of it. We refer to it sometimes as the Silverglade. And that's actually my last name because of that. You know, Flora Silverglade. A very pretty name. Thank you. Well, I guess technically my full name's Lilla Flora, but that's such a big mouthful that we usually go with Flora. Makes sense. It's also a very good, very pretty name. Thank you. So, do you have any time to prepare for this adventure, or what all do you know so far about the Nexus? Um, to be honest, I pretty much know what I already told you. I retained the information they told us in the orientation when we won, but they didn't really give us a lot of information. I think the part of the reason is because they're still trying to figure it out themselves. This is really the first explorations they're starting to make, and so they know bits and pieces. Uh, especially anything that was in the book that the heroes were given 50 years ago. They know about that stuff. But then anything that's new or anything about what we're going to be able to expect, that's the part where we don't really know yet. And so my understanding is that the ship we're going on, we get to test out sort of the first real long-ish flight, but it's going to be sort of an exploration vessel to try to find out more information. So... Uh, that's the cloud breaker. That's the one we're going on in a couple of days. It sounds like a very exciting, but also potentially kind of scary thing. Do you have any worries or concerns at all? I mean, not really. I know that the goblins who put everything together did a really good job. You know, everyone talks about how smart they are over at Nero. And I'm not too worried about it because obviously they wouldn't have... Uh, you know, offered up people spots on the ship if they weren't pretty confident in the quality of the ship and the safety of the ship, because that would look awful if something happened. So, you know, I like to think that they, they did their testing and everything and it's not a problem. Plus, I'm just so excited. I mean, I'm too excited about what I'm going to see and what I'm going to learn and what's going to be out there to even really be have time to be worried. And I imagine having your friend along will also make it very enjoyable. That's true. Yeah, the fact that Dermot and also Lilac are going to be there makes me really happy. So what are you going to be doing between now and when the ship launches? Well, probably mostly preparing to be gone for a couple of days. We don't have any animals that were keeping me and Dermot, but like I said, I've got to make sure the plants are all right. And I'm going to, I have a couple of jobs I have to finish up with some people here in town. I also want to get a few seeds. I want to see what's going to happen if I take some seeds up into the Nexus. You know, is the energy going to change them or anything like that? I'm really curious to find out. So I'm gathering up a few different kinds of, you know, fruit and vegetable seeds to see what happens when I plant them later. And I'm also trying to gather up maybe some flower seeds to see if maybe I get a strange color after they've been up in the nexus. I want to see what's going to happen. I'm actually rather curious to know what is going to happen myself. Right? It's going to be real interesting. I want to see if, like, the apples turn purple or something. If they do turn purple, I would recommend being careful if you're going to try them. You don't know what else they might do. But that's if, true. if it only changes the color, you could probably make some good money selling purple apples to really rich people. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that, but that's a good point. <laughs> Especially here in Ashport, you'd be amazed at some of the ridiculous things I see when I go to their houses. 
Oh, rich people everywhere to have ridiculous things. I find it very amusing. That's true. They've all been pretty nice to me, though, so far. I think it's partly maybe, though, because I'm so good at dealing with the plants that they like that are really rare. So that could be it. Yes, having the ability to do things that people appreciate but would rather not do themselves is always a good thing, especially if you're particularly good at it, which it sounds like you are. Thank you. Yeah, that's true, I guess. I impressed one of them, actually, with just my stupid parlor trick, but that's all right. What's the parlor trick? It's a little embarrassing, but when I was a kid, some of my friends and I, we had to take this etiquette class. It was really boring, really, really boring. And in order to make ourselves not fall asleep during it, we started challenging each other. One of them dared me to do a place setting with my eyes closed. And so I practiced and I practiced and I practiced. And eventually I got to the point where I could do an entire table setting. Well, you know, one person's worth anyway, uh, with my eyes closed. Only problem is I practiced so much with my eyes closed. I can't do it with my eyes open anymore. That's both very clever and a very interesting problem to have, but the, there are worse problems. That's true. I mean, after all, if you're sitting at a the table, there's probably not people watching you too closely, so you could have your eyes closed and not have to worry about it. Plus, as you said, that can be very entertaining. Also true. So what do you do for a living? I wander around, I keep an eye on situations, make sure... Dangerous things don't happen to help people when they need help, and I used to go on grand adventures, but I'm more or less retired from that now. Now I just keep an eye on things. Okay. Well, that's fun too, though. Did you have any really big grand adventures? I've had quite a few, but that was a very, very long time ago. Since then, I've mostly... Well, I have been... In some places where I was able to see the fight that prevented the world from ending, but I'm afraid that wasn't able to play a very large part. I was just able to provide a little support. But that's still amazing to get to be able to see it. As it is amazing to see what people rise up when the call comes to stand forth and protect the world. That's true. You never know who's going to fight and who's going to run away until you actually see it happen. You find a bit more of your faith in people when you see them standing in the face of uncertainty and they continue to stand. That makes sense. Because when push comes to shove, if you don't stand, how can you expect anyone else to? Exactly. Plus, I mean, if you don't stand up and fight, then you don't get to be a part of the adventure. That is true. And even if you know there's no way you can win... Perhaps you're standing up on where someone else to stand up. And then someone else. As long as one person is willing to stand up before it is too late, any world can be saved, I've found. I agree. As long as there's at least one person who's willing to get up and fight, then there's still hope. That there is. And even if there's one thing that can't be saved, you can still find a way to make sure. Even if you lose the battle, it doesn't mean you have to lose the war, so to speak. Very true. So do you have any sort of training or anything that are going to make you go through before you leave? Um, they haven't really mentioned any specific training. I get the feeling that we're not really going to be getting to do much on the ship in terms of like actually running anything. It's more going to be that we're passengers, but it's not a cruise ship. So I don't know what it's going to be like inside, but I don't think they're going to give us too much training. I did hear that they're going to give us some more information and a bit of an orientation. Um, there's going to be some sort of big ceremony before the ship takes off. I hope there's not too many speeches. They always run on for so long. And then after that, we'll take off. Well, I hope things pass rather smoothly and I look forward to hearing what happens in the next couple of days. Thank you. Yeah, I hope everything goes amazingly well and I'm really excited. I would be too. And if... Time decides to behave weirdly. I may see if I can figure out where you have gone and just come in and check on you. See what's going on. Oh, that'd be fun. Actually, if you're allowed, here's a small little token that will make it easier for me to find where you're gone. Oh, okay. Thank you. And she puts her hand out. Extra just 
places like a little wooden ring or a little wooden coin just like something small that's easy to like stick in a pocket but just big enough where it's hard to lose okay it's just also partially for my own curiosity because I didn't realize there were so many worlds in this area and I'm curious about this nexus myself having that will help me see a little bit more and there might be some things for me to explore at some point that sounds really fun would you like another round of drinks to help celebrate? Sure, thank you. Tales of Adventure is directed and produced by me, Brianna Toiber, as part of Pseudonym Social, a creative podcast network. The music is by Patrick Chester of Chester Studios. To see more of his work, visit his website at chesterstudios.net. Find out more about Pseudonym Social by visiting our website at pseudonymsocial.wordpress.com. If you like what I'm doing and would like to support this podcast, please go to patreon.com slash pseudonymsocial and choose one of the tiers connected to Tales of Adventure. You can also leave a review on iTunes to make our show easier to find for those who need it.